I, of course, am going to work in red, and I'm going to work in blue, as I always do. You guys go ahead and solve that first. Oops, sorry, not three, four, three, negative four. All right, everybody can graph that, yeah? Should be able to do it in your sleep. It should have taken like literally two seconds. No, literally. No, figuratively, it takes longer than two seconds. You're right. Figuratively, it should have taken two seconds. Literally, it should have taken maybe two minutes. Everybody cool? I love how many people are copying this down now because they had no idea how to do it even though we've done graphing for three units in a row. That makes me so happy as your math teacher. He said sarcastically. No, not facetiously. Out and out sarcastically. All right, so all of you are able to do that. Now listen, this is absolutely imperative. You must not choose the number I choose. Follow the next two instructions. Pick a number, multiply both sides of the second equation by that number. All right? And then solve for Y. You do this on your own. Okay? Go. Pick a number. Multiply both sides of the second equation by it, then move it around and solve for y, and see what happens. Any number will work. I'm Struggling to understand why I do not see every pencil working. That is not a complicated instruction. It's grade 8 math. By now, everyone should have done this. I am going to pick the number 3. So watch what happens. I'm going to multiply everything by 3, both sides. So what do I get? Uh, 15x minus 9y equals... No one? 81. That was the first step. I multiply both sides. Now I have to solve for y. What does that mean? Get y by itself. So, 
negative 9y equals negative 15x plus 81, yeah? Divide by what? Negative 9. And y equals, two negatives make a positive, 15 over 9x minus 9. Then I simplify, 15 over 9 becomes 5 thirds x minus 9. What did you notice about those two situations? Yes, but everybody chose a different number than 3. And everybody, well, not everybody, because only like 3 people did it, found out what? Yes, multiplying the equation didn't change the line. Did it? No. So this is the first bit of elimination. Multiplying, please highlight or underline both sides of a linear equation results in a different a different equation because it's not the same numbers but the same graphed line. Does everybody see that? If this class actually listened to me and had everybody had done this with a different number which they would have, because the chances of us all picking the same number are pretty slim, you would have noticed that no matter what we multiplied it by, positive or negative, you would get the same line. Everybody understand? Meaning, you are in charge. You can change the equations to look how you want them to look, and still get the same results. Everybody cool? Excuse me. Next, add these equations. What do you think that means? What will I do with these x's if I am adding? You will add them. What do you get? Nine x's. What do you get here? Right, plus zero y's. And what do you get here? 27. Yes? Okay. So now we notice 9x equals 27. Right? Because the, the y is dropped out. And then what would you do in every math class if you saw that? Divide by 9 and get x equals 3. Correct? Graph that on the grid above. Let's go up to the top. Where is x equals 3? Uh, 3 to the right. 1, 2, 3. And what kind of line do I draw when x equals 3? Is it vertical or is it horizontal? Vertical, because x always has to be 3. Holy crap! What just happened? It went through my solution point, didn't it? So, let's come down here and again, what happens? Two things happen when we did this. What's the first thing that you notice that happened to our algebra when we added the equations? Yes. When we added the opposite coefficients of y, the 
the y coordinate did what? What happened to the y coordinate? What? It disappeared. The y coordinate disappeared. Or it was eliminated. What's the name of this section? Solving by elimination. So I got rid of one of my variables, leaving me here, right? What did that elimination do? That elimination allowed us what? What did it allow us to find? Right. It allowed us to find the x-coordinate of our solution. Now, you guys are smart kids. Could we use this tactic to eliminate an x and find the y? We could, couldn't we? If we just subtracted, it, it wouldn't eliminate. It would leave us with a negative. But we could make our equations go together to get rid of x, yeah? Everybody with me? Everybody sees that, right? You can get rid of either one. Just like in substitution, you can substitute for either one. Everybody good? Everyone cool? All right. So I think you guys need to turn the page now, don't you? So now, let's do what Josh just suggested. Since Josh made a good guess. He said, well, let's subtract them and see what happens. Let's subtract them and see what happens. What is 5 minus 4? We'll go upwards because that's where there's space. What is 5 minus 4? 1x. What is negative 3 minus 3? No. No. It is negative 6y. And what is 27 minus 0? 27. Now I said to graph it. Can we graph that as it is? What would we do to graph that? Put it in a different form. Which form? Slope intercept. So it would be negative 6y equals negative x plus 27. I would divide everything by negative 6, and y would equal 1 6 x minus 6 goes into 27 4.5 times. Do we all agree? Now, watch what happens. Take this and graph it. Go back to your line. Where is negative 4.5? For our intercept. Don't all shout out at once. It's tough to hear the answer. I know it's really hard to find negative 4.5 on the y-axis. Go down 4.5. Four and a half. Yeah? Do we know our slope? What is it? 1 over 6. So go up to 3 and a half, and then where? Which over? Right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And oh my good gravy, where did we go through? You're looking at it, guys. This isn't a complicated question. Where did the line go? Through the solution again. God, I love Friday afternoons. So, when we add or subtract linear equations, what do we get? It results in a third equation...
which still uses the same solution. So I'm going to hope that everybody understands what I'm about to ask you. What are you allowed to do to every system that you see and still get the correct answer? You can add them. What else? You can subtract them. What else? You can multiply them. And you will always get the same answer, yes? Those three options allow us to change the way the system looks, correct? And if the system is changed, it allows us to deal with it more easily because again, as we learned yesterday, we can't deal with the system with two equations, can we? or two variables, can we? We need to get rid of one. Add, subtract, and multiply allows you to get rid of them. Do you think you're allowed to divide? Of course you are, right? As long as you divide both sides, just like we multiply. Everyone understand? Okay. So knowing what you now know, you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Please, everybody, write one more equation from here that will have the exact same solution. We should all get, there should be at least three different answers here once everybody does it. What is the first thing you can do to get another equation? You could multiply. What? By two, sure. Which equation? Both? Either? Doesn't matter, does it? So if I multiply everything by two, I'm going to get what? 6x, Six X plus 4y equals 36. Is that another equation? Does that look like either of these? Nope. So it's another equation. Will it have the same solution? Yes, it will. Good job, Alicia. You did the job that I asked you to do. Way to go. What's another way you could do it? Add them. What would that get me? Whoa, 7x. 3 plus 1 is 7? Oh, you added this one. Well, no, we're not doing that yet. Well, could we? Yeah, of course you did. Why well, wouldn't you skip it? It's not like I haven't thought about this and put it all together to get you to where you need to go. What's another way? What would we get? Four x plus y equals nineteen. That would work. What's another way you could do it? You could divide everything if you wanted. X over 2 minus Y over 2 equals 1 half. Kind of useless, but it works. With bigger numbers, it might help, right? If you had 45, 95, or 45, 90, and 105, it might help, yeah? So you could divide them all by 15. And the last thing you could do... Subtract them. 2x, negative 3y, negative 17. Does everybody understand? What's the point? You can make the equations how you need them. You're in charge. Okay? So, let's look at this one. Solve this system by elimination. 
to solve a system, I need to get rid of one of the variables, don't I? Because we cannot deal with two variables. What variable there can we get rid of? The y's. How come? Because they're the same coefficient, right? So if I add these, what's going to happen? So this is where Josh comes in. You get 7x, what happens to the y? It's gone. What do you get here? 14. Every time you see something like that in math, what do you do? Divide, and you get x equals what? 2. What does that mean in this question? What does this mean for this question? Every x is 2. Do you see some x's? Yes. What do you know every one of those x's is now? 2. So what can you do? Put it in. So now that x is 2, I can use... Which one of them do I use? Does it matter? Why doesn't it matter? Because everywhere in this question that x is 2, that x is, it's 2. So I'm going to go and I'm going to do this one. So I'm going to put that in right there. So what would I really write now? 4 times 2, because x is 2, plus 5y equals 23, correct? What's 4 times 2? 8 plus 5y equals 23. What do I do with that 8? Move it over and it becomes minus 8. So I have 5y equals 15 and y equals 3. So now, do I have an x and a y for my solution? What are they? 2, 3. Am I done? Of course I am. Should I walk away from the question yet? No. I better check. What's 3 times 2? What's 5 times 3? 6 minus 15. Is that negative 9? Yep. And we know this one works because that's the one we just tried. So we're correct. Everybody good? So what was the key thing to look for? What's the key? Try to get opposite what? Coefficients on which variable? Which variable? Either. So let's look at the next one that we have to do. Right here. Are there opposite coefficients? No. Damn. But what do we know we can do to change how it looks? Multiply. What should I multiply to get an opposite coefficient? There's two options. What's one that I could do? I could multiply the top by what? Two. Would that work? Yes, that would give me what? 2x minus 4y equals 14. Does that work? Will it eliminate a y? Terrific. Could I also multiply it by negative 3 x negative 3? What would that give me? Negative 3x plus 6y equals negative 21. That would drop out the x. Right? Does it matter which one I do? No, because what did we prove at the very beginning of this lesson? When you all didn't multiply the thing by all different numbers. If you multiply by all different numbers, which we did, in quotes, 
we found that all the solutions were the same, weren't they? So does it matter which one of these we do? Absolutely not. doesn't matter at all, does it? Does everybody understand why we could use negative 3 or 2? Because we can use x or y. Now you guys, go ahead. Use one of them. I don't care which one you use. Go ahead and try to solve that. Meanwhile, I'm going to turn off my screen. But I'm going to do both of them on the screen here. It'll still record, but you guys just won't see it. So I'm going to do this twice. scratched my arm and ripped my bent my fingernail backwards. Nobody cares, but it hurts. Ow, ow, ow. Has everybody done one of them? Which one? Oh, you've done both. Well, you didn't have to do both, but okay. I've done the first one in red. Wake up. So here we go. What was my answer? Oops. Three... And I screwed up because I wrote 5, 3, so 2y, negative 2y equals 4, and y equals negative 2, right? So my, 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 uh, um, coordinates are 3, negative 2. Everyone agree? I've double checked it in my head, I know it's okay. If I did the other way, uh, x minus 2y equals 7, 3x plus 4y equals 1. I'm going to multiply that by negative 3 this time. Negative 3x plus 6y equals negative 21, correct? Uh, the x's drop out. 10y equals negative 20, yeah? y equals negative 2. Oh, we're still good. Now I put that in up top here. 
3x plus 4 times negative 2 equals 1. 3x minus 8 equals 1. 3x equals 9. x equals 3. 3, negative 2. Does everybody see? It doesn't matter which one you use. It doesn't matter which one you multiply. It doesn't matter at all, as long as you get opposite coefficients. Cool? Now, look at, you should have one more on the right. Mine's on my next page. What's weird about that guy? Neither one of them is opposite, are they? So you got to change both. What do I got to multiply them by? Of course, if you do this one as 2, and this one as 3, will it work? Of course it will. Why would you use 2 and 3? Because those guys work. Could you also use 2 and 11? Yeah. So if we do 2 and 3, what do I get? 4x minus 6y equals 40. Correct? Everyone agrees? And what do I get on the bottom here? 33x plus 6y equals negative 3. Yeah? Then I put them together. What's 4 and 33? 37x. The y's drop out. 40 minus 3 is 37. What does x equal? 1. Now where does that 1 go? Anywhere I want. So I'm going to put it in the top one. 2 times 1 minus 3y equals 20. 2 minus 3y equals 20. Negative 3y equals 18. y equals negative 6. What's my solution set? 1, negative 6. Do I check? Sure I do. What's 11 times 1? 11. What's 2 times negative 6? What's 11 minus 12? Negative 1. So are we good? Yep. Now, what if I want to work the other one? Just to prove a point. I'm going to multiply this guy by negative 11 and this guy by positive 2. Will that work? Of course it will. I'm going to get negative 22x plus 33y equals 11 times 20 is 220. Right? Oh, sorry, negative 220. Everyone agree? And the bottom one is 22x plus 4y equals negative 2. Put them together, 37y equals negative 222. What do I do? Divide by 37, and y is going to get me negative 6. And then I get the same answers as you can see. Everybody good? Pretty easy, right? And just like I told you yesterday, it doesn't matter how I teach it. If I teach substitution first, everybody likes elimination better. If I teach elimination first, everybody likes substitution better. But I hope you remember from what we did yesterday when we were talking about that one that Peter didn't like to graph, that giant graph. Sometimes they work better than others, right? So use the one that will work for your situation, okay? You've got... Look at that, like 40 minutes to get out of here with no homework for the weekend. On your Presidential World Peas puzzle sheet, the back of it has another. Do that one with elimination. Also, of course, there is textbook work. I would recommend you practice it. Yeah, we're going to go over the test. Everybody good? Yeah, I'm going to give it back.
but I'm not going to do it until you've done a bit of work for me. Because whenever I give those tests back, everybody stops working. I will set a timer. I will remind myself. Or set a timer to remind myself. Now, I am taking care of some bookkeeping problems up here. If you need help with any of this, who's the first person you check with? Your notes. The first person you check with? A neighbor. The second person you check with? Preeti. The third person you check with? Me. Got it? Go. Go.